Alright, let's go ahead and look at the PA Caldwell Skull. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a few things today concerning uh, this view, but uh, keep in mind that anything we talk about today could relate to either the uh, skull or sinuses or facial bones, so whichever, whichever piece of anatomy that you're looking at that requires this particular uh, positioning criteria. Alright, so first this one, uh, we need the OML perpendicular, orbitomiatal line. We need the central ray to exit the nasion, uh, which is right here. We also need a 15 degree caudal angle exiting the nasion. Uh, mid sagittal plane perpendicular to the image receptor, and the inner pupillary line should be parallel. We're going to do some uh, criteria for image critique. The petrous ridges should occur, or I'm sorry, they should appear in the lower third of the orbits. So let's take a look at Petrus ridges. You see the lines here, these are the, the ridges here. If your central ray is lined up properly and if your uh, head is positioned so that the OML is perpendicular and you have a 15 degree caudal angle on your tube, you should have these Petrus ridges show up right in the lower third there. The dens, the nasal bone, and the sagittal suture should all be midline. And you know, there's there's other midline structures here. You can use any structure, but these are the ones that I like to use. Uh, so let's take a look at these here. Uh, the dens is right here. Should be uh, in alignment with the sagittal suture. It should also be in midline. Um, as well as the nasal bone. So yeah, I mean, this one looks good. This is obviously a good example of the position. Let's take a look at here. Determining rotation, you need the distance between the outer margins of the orbits and the outer margins of the skull to be symmetrical. And that shows it pretty good right there. I think that's about the same. Um, keep in mind that everyone's head is a little bit different anatomically, but should be pretty close symmetrically. And then also to t uh, determine tilt, we want to look at the lines of the upper margins of the orbits, uh, the lower margins of the orbits, as well as the uh, inferior nasal conch. Uh, they should all be parallel to the floor. And we have a pretty good uh, uh, indication that they are here. So this is a great image. Uh, I like it. So let's go look at another image here, and I'm just going to compare it to our good one. Now a PA uh, with zero degree tube angle should have the petrous ridges filling the orbits. I want to just kind of show this image to compare it to what it should look like with the 15 degree angle here. So let's take a look. Right now we have the petrous ridges uh, just about filling the orbits. I'm going to kind of just remove that a couple times so you can kind of see where it's going right here. This one seems to be a little bit lower than this side here. If you notice, the, the orbits are more oval in shape as well. So there's a big clue that the positioning is off. Right now I'm looking at the sagittal suture, the dens, and the nasal bone. You can see, now this is the posterior portion of the, cult, the skull, uh, sagittal suture is kind of curving up here. And if we could see it in the front, it would probably come down somewhere right here and be in alignment with that nasal bone. Remember this portion uh, where it unites with the lambdoidal suture is posterior and then this uh, nasal bone here is going to be anterior um, and the dens is kind of in the middle here. So knowing that the nasal bone is to the patient's right over here uh, compared to the uh, the dens, we know that the patient's nose is kind of turned to the right. We have a little bit of rotation to the patient's right. Let's look at the next one. Distance between the outer margin of the orbits, uh, or the lateral border of the orbits, and the outer margin of the skull is not symmetrical. Because the orbits are anterior, again, if you turn the head to the right, there's going to be less distance between that outer margin and the lateral margin of the skull uh, on the right side. That's only going to elongate that difference on the left. So that supports our theory that the skull is rotated to the patient's right. And finally, 
all the orbital, uh, the superior orbital rim and the uh, lower margin of the orbits and the nasal conche, uh, they're, they're tilted a little bit here. I'd say uh, patient has a small bit of tilt to the to the right, but it's kind of hard to tell. Remember, you're, you're imaging something in three dimensions. Um, if the patient is rotated, that could contribute to some of the uh, distortion that we're seeing. So it's possible there's some tilt. Um, if that was the only thing wrong with this, I don't know that I'd repeat it. All right, let's look uh, at a lateral view here. What I've done here is um, basically in order to get the petrous ridges, which are right here, um, where you want them in the orbits, you're going to have to uh, either angle the patient's head or you're going to apply that tube angle. And I think this is going to show the good, a good uh, relationship between the two here. There's going to be variations between how the head is positioned and the ideal textbook positions a lot of times. So I'm just going to take this one as it is. We'll show you uh, exactly what those Petrus ridges would look like if we shot this with the horizontal beam. So it looks like they're around the halfway point, maybe a little higher than the halfway point. I just want to show you right here. I'm just kind of drawing this little Petrus ridge over here. This is what the orbit would look like. If I was going for a PA position, I would need to uh, angle the tube up a little bit in order to throw those uh, Petrus ridges up. Remember, whatever whatever uh, anatomy is closer to the tube, we're looking at two here, looking at the orbital uh, margins and the Petrus ridge. Petrus ridge is going to be closer to the X-ray tube. So if I angle the tube uh, up or cephalic, uh, the Petrus ridge, which is closer to the tube, will move up. So let's just take a look at that one too, just to kind of show you the difference. So angling up, we're going to uh, definitely throw those Petrus ridges up. Now that's if the uh, patient's head couldn't move, if you couldn't uh, line up the OML and have a zero degree tube angle. You would have to angle the tube. So the OML is parallel to our tube angle now uh, that we have given it a cephalic angle. All right, so let's now look and see how we would get the Petrus ridges lower. Um, we would angle our tube caudal in order to lower those Petrus ridges down. And you can see that demonstrated right here. 15 degree caudal angle would throw them in the uh, lower third of the orbits. If your patient's head could move, you would tilt the head up um, in order to project the Petrus ridges uh, lower in the orbit. Uh, remember, if you have an object here anteriorly and an object posteriorly, if the head tilts up or if you lift the chin, the posterior one will go down while the anterior object will move up. So those are a few little tips you can use. Um, I hope this has helped as usual. I'll have more to come. Uh, definitely really soon here. I want to try to get through a lot of the uh, major skull work that is uh, required on the ART exam here. But uh, please feel free to comment. Feel free to email me any questions. Um, and I just want to send a special thanks to Nick Oldnall for allowing me to use his images from his uh, x-ray website here. And I'll post the link here at the end of the video. Thanks again. Have a good day.